The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Good morning, everyone. Basil Chapman here. This is the Tiger Technicians Hour on this December, the Wednesday, December the 6th of um, uh, right here, 6 uh, at 10.06 a.m. Eastern Time. The reason why I mention that is, you know, I like to look at the market in different phases during the day. There's the early morning phase. It could start at 6.30 or even earlier a.m. Eastern Time. It's anywhere between that and any kind of benchmark uh, economic news that comes out at 8.30. Uh, sometimes it's a little earlier. Today it was 8.15. Uh, it was employment, et cetera. But what really was important um, was the market's reaction. And the immediate reaction, let me just go to the futures for a moment here. Uh, the immediate reaction was, right, 8.30, right there, was to spike up. That's the five-minute chart. Spike up, pull back, and then hold and start to move up and take out the high. And that was a peak D. That's where you expect other things to happen. That's where other things can happen. But what happened is it pulled back and walked the nine-period moving average, ran up to an E and then an F with a little doji candle. That corresponded not to a peak D. That really wasn't an official peak D. I made it a peak D because right here at uh, 7.30 this morning from the low of 7.20 on the 10-minute chart at 45.80, there was a parallel high. And I looked at that and I said, you know, there was a little hiccup here in the on-balance volume. I'm going to call that a phantom peak. Why? Because I like to get to D and know that I've, I've really got to the D and other things can happen. But sometimes you, everything about the technicals, especially if you're using shorter term time frames like the one and then the five, it's like the daily, weekly, monthly, says if you get there to the high, if you're calling it C and all the technicals look like, man, that looks, that, that looks like it's a D uh, and I'm busy waiting for a, a D to come, I'd still be waiting from the high of uh, – 45, uh, 98.50. And here we are. We've already gone down to 45.83. So um, I use that as a phantom peak. So this is a, in the technique of the Chapman Wave. There are a couple of variations, but they are specific rules-based variations because if you, if you what's the point of having a te technique if you're constantly modifying it? So in this particular case, yes, we had a very nice uh, turn down from that place. And I'm just saying to myself, gee, I wonder, there is still strength in the Dow, and I'm going to go through that in a moment. But actually, the S&P is a little bit weaker than the Dow. Um, the Q's are a little bit weaker than the S&P. The SMHs, well, where are the SMHs? I'll get to them just now. The SMHs are right now down, uh, up. No, they were up. Yeah, they're up $1.40. Um, not acting that well, not acting that badly. But meantime, I'm, I'm watching this very closely because there's, there's residual strength on a purely technical basis. One or two of the indicators have started to slow down. And in the chat wave notation, there are a couple of things coming up which I need to talk about right now. So I'm just saying if there is some kind of a break and the 4582 level gets taken out, um, and 45.85 is the 200 period moving average in the five minute chart. So I'm giving it just a couple of points. If that gets taken out, uh, watch that 279 low because at that point you can get a very sharp pullback. So this is a moment where you don't want to over anticipate. There are things to monitor. There's a there's a process going on if there's any kind of top emotion. But here's what I'm really looking at. The Dow went above the 36,264 high of four sessions ago. It went to 36,292. And I've been making a big deal about the uh, 36,290s as kind of the area, as you get into the 90-ish area of every 100-point move, that's, that's often where you get resistance. So in this particular instance, um, we've gotten to that. How the Dow holds up is going to be very important. Why? Because look, you've got, 
the green line period moving average way above the 14 and the price is way above the green. There's absolutely nothing technically to say other than the chub wave notation at leg E at this particular point that you've got to be a little bit careful here of the Dow. The MACD is good. The stochastic's flat at 96%. Wow. Flat at 96 except the longer you go, the greater the chance is uh, that you're going to be pulling back, maybe have a bounce again, and then if you start to go to the 83 and then 79% level in the stochastic, that's a good hint to say it's on its way down. You've got to be really careful. But in this, this case, it's ideal that it's at 96% right now. On balance volume did pull back. Price held very well. Now, I don't want to spend time on this. I've done it enough. This leg in the weekly chart, is it an F or is it an A? F says, ooh, be careful. A says, are you kidding? Every single decline needs to be bought. So I'm leaving that for the moment because we have to go daily, weekly, monthly. Monthly is a leg C. Technicals are much, much improved. Um, not fantastic, but they're improved. And that 36,952 will act as a magnet. It will draw the price in if the Dow can get to, I, I'd have to say, 36,000. Uh, 600, and all of a sudden it's going to be like a magnet and grab it. So this is a, a momentary pullback, a digestive moment if we get it. Now let me go through the S&P um, S &P right now. Look, above the nine-period moving average, look how many times in the last five sessions, yeah, five sessions, it's touched the nine-period moving average. Today it's above it, and that's the days early, but it's up 16. That's a good sign. Um, but, and the MACD is hasn't yet crossed negative. It's very close to it. And the stochastic is still at 84%. That's good. But it's starting to turn down. On balance volume gave a signal the other day to say, hey, watch this peak F. Yes, you could go to alternate count and move to the higher level. But this is something to monitor really closely. And this is interesting because the weekly chart has not broken the 4607.07 of the week of July the 28th. But it's it's still very strong in the Look, all the technicals of the weekly chart. And the monthly has started its leg. Whoops, did I say it started its leg D? How can it do that? Uh, is that the high? Is that the one that I'm talking about right there? Uh, yeah, it is. So that's, yeah, that's the 4607. And this high is, oh, oh, I put that in. I was explaining it, uh, but I, I hit it by mistake. That should not. That's a Chapman Wave falling X formation, which says that we could go to a D. Now, that D is something to monitor in the monthly chart of the S&P. Why? Because if we start to pull back very sharply, this takes precedence. If there is a D, if it, and it's below 48, 18.62, that means that that peak B is now negated as the top of consequence expecting a higher C and D because this has taken over. So we could fail underneath 48.18, but so far all the technicals are pointing. Yes, it could be a momentary rest period, which I think we're in, and then we can go higher. QQQ, it's the same story there. Um, QQQ took out the high of uh, July. Um, so this is an E slash A in the weekly chart. But you can see the technicals here are starting to deteriorate just a little bit in the daily chart. Not, they're not really bad. But they are, one by one, they start to deteriorate a little bit. So I'm monitoring this very closely. Whoa, that was a lot. Uh, Dow's up 113, S&P's up 17, holding extremely well. I'll be back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors.
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. The Gold Report As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi folks, we're back. This is the uh, Tiger Fake Christmas Hour. We're looking at the Dow up 123, S&P's up 18. So IWM is the Russell 2000. This is a small caps. Now I had what, oh... If I can find it, I wrote it down. I had not looked at it for a while. That was the Russell 1000. Mm, why did I not write it down in front of here? Um, oh, I'll, I'll do this. Let me just do this. I'd like to do the two together, so I'll do this here. An index. I'll go Russell. Russell 1000. Oh, and I knew it would come up like this. I think that's it. Yeah, that's the one I did. Good. RUI. Yes. Oh, okay, good. So I did the Russell 1000. You can see it's a slightly different pattern. It made a PC in the monthly chart, and then it pulled back quite sharp. I could have called that an, um, a phantom peak and got this to a D. That's not the point. The point is it's gone leg A, then peak A, peak B, gray, gray because the stochastic's still under 80%. MACD is good. Nine period holding beautifully. This is the 1,000, the very small caps. And I just wanted to check. I don't think, no, it didn't go to a leg C. Um, it's made this V-shaped pattern. And that's just telling me, and look, the way it's arching over right here, that's the one that says to me, so I've got it. I could give an alternate count just for now. I don't even need to do that. A peak F is fine. Could be F, F. Uh, um, slash B, but F is fine because it's still going to a G even. So in the Chamway methodology, I look at the notation. That's one thing. That's the note. What does the notation mean? It, it it just tells me it really is a way of processing or giving a grade to um, each higher peak. 
A is good. B is uh, A is a star. A, B is good. C is really good. D is great. That's what you want. And then we'll see what happens after that. So this has gone to an F. The green nine period moving average, it's it's hugging that line, but it hasn't broken down. It's above the 14. That's really good. The MACD is just about to turn negative. Stochastics at 88%. That's really good, but starting its way down, but that's still fine. Relative strength is good. So, yeah, I want you to put it into the context of um, what are we looking at in terms of the two together, the 2000, Russell 2000, and then the Russell 1000. Now, it's almost impossible for me not to have a look at this to see if there's a failure pattern <clears throat> in this bounce up in the one minute chart. Yeah, watching it really closely, um, I think that the, I think that was a fake out that we've had three fake outs, two fake outs in about three or four sessions to the upside. And what do I mean by that? I mean, there's just enough residual strength to, together with some economic news that could really be read two ways and was read one way. And then as time moves on, it'll start to be read the other way. So I just need to see where we are there. <clears throat> and here we go. So this is the IWM. So keep your eye on this. See, it's a slightly different. See the V-shaped pattern right here in the weekly chart of the RUI. It's the Russell dollar RUI. It's I get it on TradeStation. And the Russell 1000. Now let's go to the IWM. If you can visualize these two patterns, uh, left side, daily, weekly in the middle, uh, making the cup beautiful cup formation or V-shaped formation, little lopsided, it's a little lopsided gravy cup, and you've got the uh, monthly chart. Here we go. Completely different patterns. The 1,000, I was fascinated with this over the weekend when I, I looked at it and I thought, that is really important. But here we are with lower lows in the monthly chart, lower lows in the weekly, but it did make an arch formation. Um, and then the technicals in the weekly chart, but the technicals in the daily are very strong in leg E right now to say that there is evidence that buying is coming in where it hadn't been forever. I mean, just on this whole way down through July, August, September, October to the October low, and now you're starting to see buying. And now here's the 200 period moving average in the weekly of the IWM, the I shares Russell 2000. Here's the dollar RUI. And I can't remember what the symbol was for the RUI. I'll have to go and find it for the tradable ETF. And now look, there's your V-shaped pattern, completely different. This is way more positive, the Russell 1000. I want you to, Jimmy, I wanted to just point that out because – to put things together, I need the context of where it is in relation to all the different indexes, especially the ones that count. In this case, we want the Russell. Th well, market's giving it up, giving it up. And we've gone down to, oh, I never got a chance. I, I was about to do it right there. Uh, I re short. I, I didn't do the two click session. I said I, today, I, I, I felt it in my bones that there's a really good chance to do a two click session. But because I did, to, to really, with tiny little losses, I did two trades almost at the top. And then I thought, I have to wait, I have to wait. Then I did wait, but I didn't put in more than just one position. And then I, I took it off when we started to go sideways over here, thinking I, on a big bounce, I will get back in. Never got it back in. We'll see if we can. But here we are. So I was out at, uh, in its, uh, what is it, 96, I think, 97, 96. And that was just off the high and out at about 80, 86 or something like that. Ah, nice, but wow. There it is at 81, 80. Whoa. So now it's under, look, I, I think that this is a trap uh, that I'm looking at in the last couple of days. So uh, so with that said, I'm going to go back because the reason why I'm go I'm jumping around here is this is in my in my timing phase since Friday to today into tomorrow, I consider this to be a really important timing phase. Um, and I'll explain in a moment why. Um, but first, let me finish this. So I'm going to go back to the question was the IWM. So I'll stay with the IWM because now I've got context for myself to say IWM is acting very well. It's been here before. It's a, if you look at the weekly chart, it's in this huge wreck. You remember a long narrow rectangle can last a lot longer than your patience until 
it breaks out above and goes to a D, E, or F, and then comes back, tests the middle line. I'm not putting in the middle line now because we've got the 200 period moving average as the middle line right now. That's fine. It's hugging. It's like a magnet. Would you believe when I, I talk about magnet lines, and I'm going to be doing a webinar coming up in about a, a week or so, no, two weeks or so. Oh, maybe maybe two weeks from today, or I may, I'm just deciding whether it's Tuesday or Wednesday on my schedule. Um, and when it breaks below the, the midpoint line of the long rectangle, be careful, because if it's already, and this only went to a C, and then it failed, it, it should have been a, a D. But what happened is it tests the lower part of the rectangle. Then if it rallies and it can hold above the rectangle, which was, which is now, a strong repellent line, if, and that's at 181.37. We're at 186.59. Technically, uh, we're way above it. Um, but at any point in the next week, if we start to come down and break it, that's not good. If it can remain higher for the next two weeks, not break 182, you could even touch that line, 181, mustn't go under it. If that's the case, then we should see a move that takes it to the upper band of 199 and above. So that, I hope that helps you, Jimmy. What I'm looking at is a short-term pullback in the indices, a digestive phase that's already happened in, uh, in the S&P and the SMHs and even the QQQ. But if this is able to hold steady support as the other indices pull back, show independence rather than drag, drag down like it always is, um, It's December, Tigers. That means festivities, decorating, spending time with friends and family, and the TFNN Tiger Dollar Holiday Sale. Don't miss your chance to receive a 20, 30, or even a 40% bonus when you purchase Tiger Dollars. Once you apply your Tiger Dollars to your account, you will be able to use them for any TFNN product purchase instead of your credit card. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to purchase your Tiger Dollars. Don't miss your chance to receive up to a 40% bonus on your Tiger Dollar purchase this holiday season. Every Tiger who purchases Tiger Dollars will also receive a complimentary TFNN Tiger mug with their purchase. Act fast, this sale ends December 17th. Happy Holiday Tigers! TFNN, educating investors. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors you might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. 
Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Hello, so we've got uh, the SMHs uh, off the high, still up 78 cents in 159.56. And if you're looking at the 914, it's still above, the 9's above the 14, still green. The MACD's turned down sharply, the stochastic turned down very sharply to 38%. On balance, volume is down. Relative strength is a bit weaker. But price, you know, I, I've had webinars on this for, uh, for my subscribers, they know, and for anyone thinking of subscribing, to my opening call. I've got these webinars, but I've spent a lot of time on the uh, webinar that was on the technique based the 914 technique. And look, here the 914 is still holding. I call it the, the indicator of last resort. As long as it's holding, this price is still in a positive mode. As soon as the nine turns pink, it says if you've got a D or whatever it is at the top, the chap wave D, E, or F, in this case, a double top of C1, C2 that acts like a D, it says be careful because you've just increased. You've gone from a cell signal, probably gone from a cell signal. We haven't even got that notation yet of a cell signal. I've still got a plus up there um, to a cell mode. That's just a designation. It doesn't say, oh, my God, now you're going all the way down to one. It just says you're in a cell mode. That's the designation. Now you've got to be careful. But that weekly chart is still strong. That's why I've been saying that I'm considering that we're, we're looking at daily charts that are very different to the weekly charts. And the weekly charts are the ones that are going to give us the big picture, uh, which is the reason why I decided that in timing, I, about a week and a half will be perfect for timing in the sense that we'll be looking at some of my indicators and saying, where is it? What's working? What are the sectors that are really holding very well? And uh, let me just finish this up by saying, so I had a question about uh, in, uh, Intel. Uh, Gary, one, you just sent a note to say uh, Intel. I, I actually didn't have a chance to read the note. Uh, but yeah, look, this made a peak F. The 9 is turning down, but it hasn't been go gone negative. MACD is the same. Looks like the SMHs. The weekly chart, Intel trading at 41.98. INTC is a symbol of six cents right now. But look at the weekly, that 200 period moving average. It didn't even know there was a 200 period moving average forever. Um, when it went, when it started to break down in April in the 45s before it went to 24.73, there's the rectangle formation where it went to the D, it broke the midpoint, and then it quickly went back above the halfway marker. And look how green, the nine period moving average has been green ever since. So this pullback here says, there are a number of indicators that say that between 40 and 38 would be good support for Intel. Uh, what was the other one I wrote it down, didn't I? Um, advanced micro devices, look at this. This is the weekly chart. 132.83 was the high in uh, June. It pulls back to the uh, 90 level. And now it's trading at 120. Still not bad. I've got this as a gray A. Why is it gray? Because the stochastic, oh, whoa, 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 wait a minute. Stochastic's at 91%. Uh, huh. Okay, so that's very good action. That's the weekly chart. Look at the daily up. The daily made, that's what it was. Daily made a gap up with two, there's a doji candle. This is, I have a webinar based on this from quite some time ago. I call it the silent doji candle. And what happens is the sign, you know, if you do a scan, you do a scan for doji candles. That's giving you the, the candle right at that moment as maybe a peak or a trough. But actually, I found over the years that if you do your homework, you can find that the one just before the top or just after the top or just before the bottom or just after the bottom is actually the key. So you've got a doji candle warning at a peak D on the, uh, this is on the 28th. The 29th, it spikes up to a new recovery high of 125.73, five points off the high that was made back in July, June, July. And then doji candle, and then a big red candle, not a Chapman Wave uh, Roman. It's almost like it, but it was. Well, it actually did everything that you talk about, I talk about. This is a little Chapman Wave uh, Roman candle today. We've gone halfway into the wick uh, yesterday, but then it turned up, and today we've gapped up. So the, uh, these little mini ones, I don't put in as much emphasis at all, but it is a technically one. 
I like the really big one, and I'll show you the GD, uh, the gold chart in a moment. <clears throat> so this says, just a little warning to say that advanced micro weekly is looking great, monthly charts improving, but the daily chart says there could be a pullback, a minor pullback towards the 115 to 113 area, and then you've got to reassess. If it makes a new recovery high, that is really outstanding action, right? In other words, if it goes into the 120. Uh, five and a half, 126 area. That's really good. Okay, so I did that. Next question has uh, is uh, crude oil. Uh, I wanted to do crude oil because in the den it was mentioned. I can't if I can remember where it was. Um, so look, crude oil. I said made a peak. Do you remember Chapman Wave methodology? Peak D is where other things can happen. Wow, what a pullback from the 94 area. We're at 70 right now in leg C to the downside. Monthly chart is starting to wane. Uh, it was doing quite nicely before, but now it's not. And the we've got a new rec uh, unrecovery low. I never know what it is. Uh, Multi-week low. There are <laughs> a multi-week low F right here. And so we have DBA, which is the DBA we've had it, uh, for a couple of years now. Uh, the DBA is the DBA Agricultural Fund. So I had been talking about this for a little while, saying, you know, there are signs that deflation, uh, you can't, you can't, as long as you've got the grains holding really well, you can't expect deflation. But the DBA, which is the agricultural fund, is saying that there is some weakness in the grains, and they, that should be translated into stocks like a GIS, which is having a nice session here. But look at the low. Look at that. General Mills, Cheerios, Annie's, and other foods. Um Makes a high at about 90 about seven, eight months ago and is now trading down the 60 area, 65 area. So um, it just said to me that at some point that's going to be if that if the DBA actually starts to take out the 21.42, 200 period exponential moving average, says 21.99, that's not only going to tell me that it's broken this uptrend support line, this inside track propellant zone. But it tells me that there should be some deflationary aspects. So together with crude oil, we're going to watch this closely. But then someone put in DBA. We once had DBA when we wanted to keep long crude oil. Um, and that has much more crude oil. I can't remember the exact proportion uh, of DBC. Did I say DBA? I mean DBC. <clears throat> DBC. So I haven't updated. I just saw this in the den. Have a look at this. So DB Commodity Tracking Fund, and I, I don't know what the proportion is, but I believe it has a lot more crude oil in it. But you can see that right here. There's a DB Commodity Tracking Fund. I made a high just over 30, around about uh, in 2022. I think it was May or June. And then it's, it's been pulling back ever since. So we've got to watch this because together, this could be a fantastic thing if if the market starts to break to the upside, I mean, it really significantly get closer to the all-time highs, then you've got deflation, you've got lower interest rates, a lot of things could go right. In the meantime, short term, I think that there's a digestive phase unfolding. It'd be a good time to look at what you want to buy that you didn't get in before. I'll be back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? 
Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Uh, yeah, so let me just do this for a second here. So when I was looking at... Um, the gold chart. This is this is the, this is a real Chapman wave inverted Roman candle. You see this long wick. I usually don't like to put the price in because it always changes because it gets smoothed out. It's the continuous contract of gold. Uh, Twenty-one fifty-two point three was the high somewhere in that area. So the rule of thumb is that you've got two days, either maybe three, but usually it's two, to get into halfway into the wick the long wick on the upside. And if you do that and see for ni for 90 minutes, because the shorter time frame is a daily chart, so I go to a smaller time frame, I, I usually give it a little bit of time. So 90 minutes on a daily chart, they can go on over 21.22 um, and hold there for 90 minutes. There's a chance that you're going to go very quickly to retest the high and maybe even break it. If instead you've gone and close underneath the low of that bar, which we did yesterday, you've got two, I'm going to give it three days in which to close decisively above that level. Usually it's a good go well into the dark red part of the candle. And that would put you somewhere around 2072. And that says, whew, okay, as long as the nine is holding above the 14, that's a good sign. That's maybe a, at least a short-term bottom that shouldn't be tested for a, little, a few days or a few bars. And then you should try to move to the body of the candle. The entry point, in this case, the, the continuous contract was opened at 2094. So that's the way I'm looking at it. But from the action that I saw, from the fact that, for instance, one of the uh, stocks that we missed by a penny and then it shot up from, uh, from the 13... 25 instead of getting to 1324 it ran all the way up to <clears throat> one big move to a leg d and then there's the silent doji uh, uh, this is asa gold, gold and precious metals uh, to 15.80 uh, it's not down much it's only at 1537 but this is be careful a little digestive phase right here all the technicals are still very good so more digestive phase big single leg a to the upside that's the big test that's going to come. Does it become a single leg failure pattern? I don't think so. I think there's good support at the 1472 200 period, moving average between 1510 and 1472. So those are clues to me. So I'm just saying that as I'm looking at it right now, I think that that, in a way, that was really a, a sucking in. Uh, just 
the people who hadn't bought gold at all, the last two sessions, especially that Sunday night when it spiked up sharply, same with silver. See, silver didn't have that kind of candle. This is a, an ugly kind of candle. But so far, the 9 is still way over the 14. So it's a working process that says um, the 200 period moving average <clears throat> uh, support is at 23.98. But while, watch this inside track. What was a propellant zone has come back to be a support zone in the weekly charts. And that's silver. So I think it's a work in progress. And I suspect that there's a good chance that um, that, that that was a strong buy signal in gold and that this is a, a digestive phase with a somewhat almost like a, a, you find very often in the Bitcoin. So just a quick question, BTC, Bitcoin trading up. Oh, did I forget to do that? So that is not, that is a, that's an FSHB. This becomes C and D. Okay, this goes right here, C. I just kind of ignored it, even though I just spoke about it. I don't know why it just not, hasn't been on my list because we did have a fantastic trade uh, a couple of years ago in this that went from the 12s to the 50s or something in the GBTC. But I just have no, kind of ignored it for a while. This is your A. Oh, look at this, A. But you've got to count from this starting point. You have to count every peak. There's another little one. So that's a gray A. That becomes a B. That becomes a C. And all of a sudden, I'm looking at what looked like a C is actually a D. So I, I and a D in the weekly charts. You know, all of these things are just saying be a little careful here. I know that people think that the market is just going straight up. I think we're in a digest. We've begun the digestive phase, and I'm going to be. I, 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 I don't like to send out intraday updates. I always find that uh, you could do the same thing, but even better the next day. So I'm going to hold off doing anything. But I'm I'm just telling you that this is action that. This is gotcha action with people thinking, oh, my God, now it's going to the moon this morning again. And, and all of a sudden we're pulling back. So just real quickly, I had a question. Could I follow up on what I'd spoken about before? You're, we are long a UEC. This is the one that I said I think is the best in the uranium sector. Made a nominal new high today in GSAC. Uh, it's at 674. We're in a 364. Look at look at the and I said this every year. There's this one crazy stock, maybe one. Sometimes we've had two that we're in, and it just keeps going higher and higher and higher. And uh, all the the daily chart helps the weekly. The weekly chart helps the monthly, and the monthly chart is near at a recovery high. Six sixty was high in April of last year. It plummeted down to the twos, and now it's a six seventy four. I'm anticipating some kind of a digestive phase because of this pattern right here in the weekly. But at this point, you've got support at 6.03. How can that be in a weekly chart when you're at 674? You'd expect it to come down even deeper. So I, I'm, I'm just saying uranium seems to be on its way. This is the, the mystery thing. Every year, there's one that just says, don't forget about me. When people start talking about me, I'm in trouble. No one's even talking about uranium at this particular point. Um, and... Uh, where, where did I write it? I write down here. ADI, I did that, did that, did that, did that. And then I wanted to do... Um, oh, yeah. So, sure, I, I'll do that. So, Apple, this is the big seven. So, yes, this candle that says there's a chance this could become almost like a rogue wave where you got your signal. You didn't really get your signal. Well, the MACD turned down, stochastic turned down, but the on-balance volume is good. The relative strength is quite good. And the 9 is over the 40. Now, this has to be considered a decent G. It could be an alternate count because after G, there's never an H. If this is an instant, oh, I don't want to take too much time. Today is Wednesday. Maybe I'll do it on Technical Friday. But there's a chance that this becomes a Chapman Wave unconventional flat-based restart, which says however high... Uh, Apple goes in this particular phase right now, the 186 level is going to be tested. 187 level is going to be tested. I don't want to go there right now other than to say I'm calling this a G. It could be an alternate count, but I'm just calling it a G for now. And in the weekly chart, it's in a gray leg B. because Oh, no, it's not. Like stochastics at 91%. This is a leg A, and this is a B, blue, meaning this is in a buy mode, trying to retest the 198.23 all-time high. Looking quite good. 
a rising wedge, a narrowing wedge in the in the weekly chart, in the monthly chart. Let's go to uh, a, a Amazon. Amazon right now also broke to a new recovery high over the last two weeks. Uh, there's a peak E and it's kind of stalling here. Um, now that can't be an instant restart. That is a peak E. That's all there is to it. And I'm just watching it because these biggies are starting to pull back. And we saw that dollar RUI, which is the Russell 1000, doing oh, much, much better it, relative to uh, the IWM. And that's important. Uh, Microsoft, Microsoft, back high today. I hit 374, 18 is trading 370.70. So you can see the nine is starting to shrink. It's still positive, but above the 14. Bank these weeks, past the weeks, on balance, rolling is bring back. Even the red for strength is starting to weaken. Ah, this is going to be such an interesting thing for the last uh, segment of the show. We'll do a little wrap up. I've got a question here. Yeah, the GDX. Oh, I didn't do the GDX. I'll be back in a moment. Ho, ho, ho! It's December, Tigers. That means festivities, decorating, spending time with friends and family, and the TFNN Tiger Dollar Holiday Sale. Don't miss your chance to receive a 20, 30, or even a 40% bonus when you purchase Tiger Dollars. Once you apply your Tiger Dollars to your account, you will be able to use them for any TFNN product purchase instead of your credit card. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to purchase your Tiger Dollars. Don't miss your chance to receive up to a 40% bonus on your Tiger Dollar purchase this holiday season. Every Tiger who purchases Tiger Dollars will also receive a complimentary TFNN Tiger mug with their purchase. Act fast, this sale ends December 17th. Happy Holiday Tigers! TFNN, educating investors. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN educating investors everything in the universe is governed by the fibonacci sequence this mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market to stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of sign up for the fibonacci 24 7 newsletter at tfnn.com when you subscribe you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader larry pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to and you can trust larry's analysis after all he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Hi, folks. So just this last section, let me say uh, that Arm, Arm Holdings uh, was an IPO, ran up from the uh, 50 level to about 68, and then it tumbled down. Uh, to the 45, 46 level, and now it's trading at 64. But you can see this is kind of struggling here. It's a little toppy, uh, and it's a sideways rectangle formation. They usually resolve to a little bit of a dip to the downside. It's like a long rectangle formation. So watch this 50. I'd say between 60 and 58 is key support over the next week or two. But this is one I wouldn't be surprised 
in the monthly charts and an IPO that this has started the big move to a peak peak A, maybe maybe this month, I don't know, then a B, then a C, and then a D to an all-time high at some point looking out. So I hope that helped. So real quickly, the GDX I'd mentioned yesterday, you could, some people want to know about it, and I said, oops, I typed in the wrong place. I said, I'm going to wait a little longer. Um, it, maybe you could start a little nibble right here. I, I Personally, I would wait or you could split the split the, a, a starter position a little bit here, and then maybe a little bit under 30. I'm kind of waiting. I think GDX is nice bounce today, up 38 cents at 30.86. I I think gold I think gold is in play, and therefore I would like a pullback. And how you play? Not all the gold stocks, not everything, but I th I would be selective. But I would go into something along the lines of maybe a GDX as a, as a kind of an overall thing. But some of the stocks, the ones that have done best at pullback, that's what I'd be looking at. So in the meantime, uh, <clears throat> so with that said, I'm going to hand you over to Steve Rhodes. Now the Dow's only up 37. It was up huge earlier on. S&P is only up 6.46. Is this a two-click session? That means you you start to think of getting out after 2 o'clock or 3 o'clock. If it sometimes even holds into the low of the day, which could be at the close. I don't know. I'm just saying. I, I'm just looking at this as a real trap ball that opened up. Beep, beep. And uh, this is, um, we'll see what happens. Uh, the rug got pulled at least for a little bit. I'll be back uh, tomorrow. Have a great day and check out my opening call, Daily Newsletter. <laughs>